Houston and welcome to On The Money with Matt Stevenson and Peter Lott of Allied Wealth. I'm your host, Spike Spangle. Again, Peter, the Executive Director of Financial Planners <laughs> at Allied Wealth. I love that title, I've man. I've given you a new title. title. And the President of Allied Wealth here, Matt. How are, how are you guys both doing today? We're doing awesome, Spike. And I noticed on the last show that my nickname, Blade, finally made it into the credits. So <laughs> hey, I'm excited about I that. I love Blade <laughs> Stevenson and I'm really just trying to focus on making his name just Blade. No no more Blade Stevenson, no more Matt Blades, this Blade. Oh man, without Ryan, I'm going to have to keep you guys wrangled in it's today and it, focused it on retirement planning. He's ready we, to get on the boat, Spike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, mean, I know, I after know. After here, I'm on the boat for us today, so it's, it's good. It's All good. right, well, well, thank you guys. You know, one of the important things we're going to talk about in retirement planning today are the different kinds of advisors that are out there. Look, I got to tell you the truth. You, you put in a, a Google search, an internet search of any kind, say financial advisor, hundreds of thousands of names pop up right More away. Than that. How does anybody know where to start? So we're going to talk a little bit about the different types of financial advisors today, right? Yep. Absolutely, Spike. And especially right now with these things as uncertain and volatile as they are, you know, understanding what you have the ability to do and who you have the ability to work with is as important now as it ever has been. Matt, that's kind of the cornerstone of our educational process. I want my clients to know how financial advisors are compensated because most people that come in the office they have no idea have you ever talked to a client who was like oh yeah I know exactly how much I'm playing Mr. Advisor and <laughs> oftentimes they don't have a clue Rarely and I feel if like ever. if you're if you don't know what you're paying you're right. probably paying too much and that's money that's leaving your pocket going into someone else's pocket when it could stay at home and you could take that vacation. And we're talking that those those percentage points, one to two percentage points, can make a huge, huge difference, difference. Huge. on your add retirement. Up to tens, time. if not hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of a twenty to thirty year retirement, and so that's why, really, the first thing that we're going to talk about are different types of advisors that you can work with. And really, there's two main types of advisors. There's more of the traditional uh, retail yeah. side of the business. And these are the guys and gals that, you know, they work on a commission basis. So, you know, think back to when you first started saving those years ago, maybe it's 20 or 30,000 just looking to get that start. Maybe they offer you a basket of products or mutual funds, and that can be a really good thing. It gets your dollars working for you. But the thing to understand is the psychology yeah. of why an advisor works with you. What's their motivation to have that partnership? In the case of the retail advisor, it's to earn that upfront commission. And what we see often, Pete, is that it can create some challenges in that ongoing communication with the advisor, right? Well, like I explained to my clients, you know, once that advisor's been paid, What's what's their what's their skin in the game to keep going to make okay. sure you know two yeah. or three years from now you're still in the right place? Maybe they just they sell it and kind of leave it. What's what's their real motivation behind that? And and thank God they're there to get us started investing. And I tell everybody on the smaller cases that come through, thank God they're there to get us started. But when you've grown you know a couple hundred thousand dollars, a couple million dollars, and you're going to walk in and write a fifty or sixty thousand dollar one time check, that that's expensive. Right. You know, that's a lot right. of money. It adds up quick. So uh, beyond retail advisors, <clears throat> what what kind of other advisors are there? Yeah. So when we think about the other types of advisors, and this is something that I've seen advisors migrate more to over the last ten to fifteen years, especially after the financial crisis mm -hmm. in two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine. Because the retail advisors, and God bless them, you know, thank God that they're out there to help us get that start, but they do have some limitations. They have okay. that set menu, mm -hmm. much like us going to Burger King or McDonald's, they're only going to offer what's on that right, menu right. that they have available to them. And so affording yourself the ability to be more holistic in helping your clients that's where we reside. And so you would call Pete and myself and Ryan uh, wholesale or fee-based advisors. Yep. Another right. term that you hear a lot is the word fiduciary. And that holds a lot of weight. And what that means to us is that we have a legal responsibility to our clients to, to put their pocketbook ahead of our own. And so really aligning your interests with the advisor you're teaming with to feel those victories together and grow together, that's what it should be about. Right, right. Well, yeah. you know, we want to work hard. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, if you've got an account that, that we grow, you grow your, we grow your, we work hard to grow your account and we grow that money for you, 
We, we're incentivized to make sure that happens, right? We want to see that happen as badly as you do. We're, it, it puts us on the same team, aligns us and together. You're rowing in the same boat together. Exactly. You we're want to see it move forward. You're not pulling. You're not dragging down with these extra fees. You're like, hey, if you know, if you move up, and it also means that if the markets go down, events out of your control. You will also take less for that yep. because if your clients didn't make more, you're not going to make more. So my clients don't like losing money, and I know I that me or Matt don't like losing <laughs> money don't. either. So it puts us on that same team. I think that's really important to align your interests with your advisor's interests, and you guys work together like that instead of just maybe a one-time commission. Um, right. You don't really know where the guidance is going to be right. later on. And there's also hybrid advisors, Matt, right? I mean, okay. yeah, so those? there are, it's really a third type, but it's a combination of both the retail or commission-based advisor and an advisor that offers an annual fee or fiduciary basis. So uh, we had an example of a gentleman that called in from the TV show a few weeks back. He came in, he'd been working with one of those bigger box retail companies, uh, but it was one of those situations where he had those branded products and yeah. mutual funds um, inside of his nest egg, and he was also paying that advisor one and a half percent per year. Well, when we went to build his financial flight plan, we uncovered that he was paying an average cost of three percent per year on one point two million dollars, thirty plus thousand dollars a year in cost. <laughs> You talk about eating away at your retirement plan quickly. That adds Does up. his wife know he was paying? <laughs> no. kind of he doesn't know yeah. either. He so didn't know either. That's exactly why we go through that education to it uncover is. this, give our clients uh, more insight into where they currently are and what they have the ability to do. Uh, Matt's going to tell us about this financial flight plan before we go out to break. But Peter, in, in your own words, what, what is the financial flight plan? What is kind of the basis of it? I mean, the basis of it really is it's, a, it's an income plan we want to start with. And let me back up, actually. It's, it's getting to know you, right? We want to get to know who you are. We want to know what your goals are, what retirement looks like for you, what the perfect retirement looks like for you. What does your day in retirement look like? What do you want it to be like? And build that plan based on that. It's going to look at what you're currently doing. It's going to look at building an income plan for you. It's going to help with health care. There's, there's a laundry list of things this thing's mm -hmm. going to be able to do for you. But first and foremost, we want to get to know you and then build that plan based on what your needs are. Because not everybody right. has the same set of needs. So we want to change those things and make it, just bend it towards exactly what you're looking for. Matt, we've got to take a quick break. Can you tell the viewers out there really quickly about the offer that you have on the financial flight plan? Absolutely, Spike. And so if you're interested to learn what type of advisor may fit you best and begin building your own financial flight plan, here's what is incorporated into that plan. We're going, to we're going to discover things such as your tolerance for taking risk and your capacity or ability to take risk and maintain your lifestyle. We're going to develop an investment plan to make sure you're properly diversified and perhaps protect a portion of your nest egg for the years to come. We're going to look at your income and spending plan, so things like your Social Security benefits, maybe you have a pension, and creating a withdrawal plan from the nest egg to sustain your lifestyle. We're going to look at a tax plan. Many of you have saved into those tax deferred accounts for many years, and Uncle Sam will come calling um, to get his fair share or what he believes is his fair share. And so understanding how to properly position your plan to keep more money in your pocket and out of Uncle Sam's is very important. A health care strategy to have in place as well as legacy and estate planning, that's all part of the financial flight plan. All you have to do is call the number. It's 844-944-7555. Again, 844-944-7555. Sounds like one of you got an email from a client. You might want to check that on the break. Get your complimentary financial flight plan right here. Folks, we're broadcasting all over the Houston area. So the first 25 callers, get your own complimentary financial flight plan. But call us right here, 844-944-7555. More on the money with Matt and Peter when we get back right after this. How confident are you in your current financial plan? Do you know with certainty how the recent market volatility will affect your future hopes and dreams? How much are you paying in taxes? And how much are you losing to unnecessary high fees? You didn't work to save this money so that you could spend your time worried in retirement. Now is the time to take charge of your finances so you can feel confident about your future. Call in during the next 30 minutes of today's show only. 
to set up an absolutely complimentary, no obligation, full-blown financial review that will result in your own customized written plan. That we're giving away complimentary to the first 10 people who respond. We'll start with a full-blown analysis of what you already have. By running a report to untangle how much you are currently paying in fees, how you're allocated for risk, and what it's costing to work with your current advisor. Next, we'll identify your goals. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where do you want to go, and who do you hope to go there with? Is your current financial plan set up to get you there without mishap? Let's design a roadmap to create a financial plan you can follow with confidence. Get the piece that so many people are missing from their retirement. Find out how having a written plan can make a difference to your retirement dreams. Call now to schedule your complimentary, no obligation, full-blown financial review today. Welcome back to On The Money. Today I have Peter and Matt from Allied Wealth here. Uh, Ryan, Ryan must be flying around in his plane. Right uh, I'm sure. I believe he no, is. He's <laughs> sitting down with clients. I'm absolutely, absolutely certain. He's not here to tell us that he is a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we there, mentioned right? it for him. <laughs> so he four can be seconds grateful. into this episode. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I, I wanted to ask you, you were doing great stuff on the different kinds of advisors that are out there. Now I want to ask you about the different kinds of tactical management. Now, for the viewers out there, I'm not saying that they need to figure this out on your own, but maybe you can describe for us the different types of strategies that are out there. Yeah, Spike, and you know whether you work with a retail or a wholesale advisor, understanding what you have the ability to do in building a plan is one of the most important foundations to creating it. And so we'll talk about three ways that you can invest your dollars. There's out-of-the-market investing, there's more of the passive approach to investing that many of us have been doing mm -hmm. uh, throughout our working years. And there's perhaps a bit of a misunderstood way, uh, which is more of a tactical approach to how we invest. And really, how do we blend between all three is part of that educational process. It's part, that's what we start with. We start with that educational side, and we talk about that in great detail. You know, the out of the market vehicles are great as a bond replacement. Um, I'm going to stop you right there. I, I like to call it uh -oh. my jargon alert. So uh -oh. we are out of the market. So so things that aren't directly exposed to what's happening in exactly. the stock market. So exactly. a bond. Would this include things like real estate, even gold and there's silver? There's products. There's CDs. Um, there's annuities that can fit in there. Okay. We're going to okay. go through and list those out and just kind of fine tune what you like. What do you don't like? If you don't, if you tell me you hate it, we're going to wipe it off the table. But okay. if it's something that you feel like it's necessary for you. We're going to talk about it and, and, and provide some education. And Pete, it's really important whether you feel like it may be a fit in your re retirement plan or not to go through that education because there's an 85% chance that you will be sold uh, one of these out of the market programs by another financial mm -hmm. advisor. And so going into those visits and conversations armed with that insight and knowledge mm -hmm. is one of the most uh, basic value adds that we can provide. Basically, when me and Matt started out, we were teaching classes at community colleges on retirement and we went through all of this and we loved it. We'd have, uh, we'd have big groups of people come in and teach people at the community colleges and it was just based on retirement. And that was so much fun for us to do. We were, we were still young and green doing this. We were done now. We were even younger then, right? And uh, it was a ton of fun, but we taught people how to do it. Just, it was just educational. And people would come mm -hmm. in. They would take the, edu take the education. Sometimes they, they enjoyed it. Sometimes they probably laughed at us, but they got something out of it. Right. And we really enjoyed it. And it's part. great. You know, we've missed being in big groups like that. Thankfully, yep. that's all coming back. But questions beget questions. People start to go, oh, you know what? I'm not the only one who doesn't understand this. I'm not the only one who doesn't understand out of the money. I'm not the only one who doesn't understand exactly how annuities work. So if people have those kinds of questions when they're coming in for the first time, you encourage that? Absolutely. Bring in your list of questions? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's really what it's all about is the more questions that you can bring to us, the better we can help inform and educate mm -hmm. you to build a plan that is tailored for you and that you're comfortable with. So we've talked a little bit about the out of the market investing, really to right. get that protection, get a solid rate of growth, uh, which you can do for little to no cost oftentimes. Uh, once we move into the market, what most of us have been taking advantage of over the years is what we call passive investing. A great example would be socking money into those 401k plans over the years, um, which is a great thing. It allows you to accumulate those dollars to build towards retirement, and it's 
more or less positioned to get all of the market upside. So easy math example, if the stock market goes up 10% this year, that's our likely expectation. But in doing that, it allows us or positions ourselves to see all of the downside risk that comes along with it. And that's pretty poignant in a year like this, right, Pete? <laughs> yeah. A year like this or 2020, 2020 or even 08, you know, you saw a big drawdown there as well. But Matt, kind of tell them how passive is structured. How does it work? Yeah, so another word for passive management is the variability that comes along with it. Uh, so again, thinking about your 401k plan, it's fairly low cost oftentimes to implement. But whenever we think about a type of investment strategy, we also have to think about this idea of time horizon. Again, perhaps some jargon there, Spike, but to me it means any strategy that we implement, how long should we need to do that mm -hmm. to see the results that we're looking for? And that's the challenge with passive investing. Just think about our S&P 500 since the turn of the century. It's been a wild roller coaster mm -hmm. ride. And so going through those ups and downs can be okay when you're in your 30s and 40s, saving away for retirement. Right. It's a much more challenging situation when you're in your 50s or 60s, getting into that retirement red zone or you're already retired and you need that consistency from the nest egg for income. Pa passive investing doesn't mean not actively putting money into it though. Like you said, your 401ks, it's maybe like even target, strategy, right? yeah, okay. You buy, you hold on these investments, I call it the buy, hold and pray strategy, and it works <laughs> for a lot of younger folks, but as you get older, right. I feel like it just doesn't work as well, because if your luck's like mine, you're gonna have to retire on the day the market's down, right? There's gonna be a big depression, there's gonna be the market's gonna be down, that's my luck when I retire. So we wanna get away from that. We don't want to have to continue working just because the market's down. We want to be able to mm -hmm. take retirement when we want to take retirement and not based on geopolitical risk or if the Fed's going to raise right. rates. All those risks that are out there, you just don't want to do that when you're that close to living out the best years of your life. And an easy way to think about it is it's kind of like climbing Mount Everest, right? So when you're in those working years and you're socking money into mm -hmm. those retirement plans, you have the ability to do what's called dollar cost averaging into the market. Okay. So it can be a good thing for us when we see those dips in the market, believe it or not, because then we're contributing dollars every two weeks, every month at lower prices. And more or less over time, the market has moved in an upward trajectory. Not all the way, all the time, of course, <laughs> but um, that allows us to take advantage of building our retirement wealth to prepare, but that's the opposite of what we want to do when we're in retirement, we've reached the top of that mountain. Mm -hmm. Because dollar cost averaging in reverse, when we're taking money out of the retirement plan, when we see these market declines, such as we've seen here recently, can really compound the issue and create far too much variability inside of your plan. I'm gonna to have to stop you there. We, we are gonna to have to take a, a quick break, but this is gonna be a, a, a special break right now. Uh, you've talked about two different types of money management. We're gonna come back after this break and talk about tactical management, which I think a little bit more about what you guys do. But uh, you are all part of the Mighty Oaks Warrior Program. What exactly is that? Yes, Spike, so this is a foundation that we've supported for many years now, and it's one that's near and dear to our heart. Uh, when we think about the soldiers coming back from overseas, there's 20 uh, soldiers suffering from PTSD that take their own lives on U.S. soil every single day. And so what the Mighty Oaks Warriors Foundation is positioned to do, it's the only faith-based program sponsored by the U.S. government to help provide a solution for those soldiers coming back home. And so, again, this is near and dear to our hearts. We're happy to support them. Here's a short video. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Many of our veterans feel they need to fight their battles alone. This self-isolation has led to the staggering statistic of more than 20 veterans taking their lives every day. The mission of Mighty Oaks is to eradicate the veteran suicide epidemic and help our warriors change their legacies. We've been able to help over 4,000 veterans and first responders by equipping them with the tools they need to live the lives they were created to live. Our faith-based, peer-to-peer approach has one of the highest success rates of any program available today, offering hope and understanding to those who need it most. By aligning their lives to biblical principles, these men and women are able to lead their families, 
their communities, and our nation. It's your generosity that can make a difference in the lives of the men and women who have fought for our country and our freedoms. Now that they're home, don't let them fight alone. Learn more at MightyOaksPrograms.org. Welcome back to On The Money Houston. Today I've got uh, Matt and Peter here with us in the studio. I'm your host Spike Spangle. Thank you for watching that very special message about the Mighty Oaks Warrior Program. If you would like to contribute to that as well, please do. We want to help the service members of all of our country who protect us and provide that blanket of freedom. Folks, uh, so we were continuing to talk about different types of management and I would say probably closer to what you do is more called tactical management. What exactly is that? So tactical management is the ability to move your, move your positions around based on what indicators are telling us. And it's helpful because we're watching things basically upstream than what your statement's saying. So the way it's built is it's not really designed to get all the upside of the market. It's not something that's going to beat the market. We're not designing it like that. We're really designing this so that we can get about 80% of the market upside. But when the market's down, we only want to get a portion of the downside, right? And we really limit those drawdowns, which is important when we're going through times like we are right now where the market's way down and our clients aren't having to go through that. Yeah, Pete, a great example was 2019 going into 2020. You know, the market had one of its better years ever mm -hmm. in 2019. I think the return was close to 30%, mm -hmm. if I recall. And then we know what happened in early 2020. Yeah. <laughs> It fell off yeah. very quickly at the beginning of the pandemic. I believe the S&P had a downturn of about a third of its value. It did, man. I had a client call me at the height of this thing. He's like, Pete, the, uh, I see the market's down 35%, man. I am freaking out. Where are we at? I'm like, okay, Scott, let me pull your account. I got my own fancy computer there, and I'm pulling up all the numbers. And I said, Scott, we're down overall about four and a half. Really? And there's like a, there's like a, a pause on yeah. the phone. He's like... No kidding? That's fantastic. You guys are doing awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. And I'm so sorry I bugged you. Go back to work. I'm going to mm -hmm. stay on vacation and, and, I'm, and I'm trucking along. And that's the kind of conversations we like to have. And that was a specific one that came to my mind talking about the, uh, the drawdown in 2020. Yeah, Pete. And that's really what it's about. We say all the time in the office, we're in the peace of mind business. And so being able to create that financial flight plan for our clients to where they can go out enjoy the retirement and spend with confidence for mm -hmm. the next 20 to 30 years, that is the most important value add that we can possibly provide them. Right, right. I remember watching that day too. It, it was, you know, it was historical, at least to watch it slide that yeah, much that in a 24 hour period. The, the break stoppages that actually mm -hmm. happened. But part of my point to this, when we say tactical, people might think that you're specifically talking stock trading, options trading all the time. You're talking about tactical management within large groups of funds and portfolios. Can you explain a little bit more? We're not talking about day trading. Yeah, Spike. So really what it allows us the ability to do is adapt between asset categories. So not just things like stocks and bonds, but also the real estate market, commodities such as oil and gas or gold, international investments, even currency like our US dollar. And so it's founded on two basic principles how we diversify between each of those categories at any given time, and most importantly, just like we're not going out in shorts and a t-shirt when it's zero degrees outside, <laughs> our money must adapt to the environment we find ourselves in. And so being able to adapt and adjust between those categories of investments is exactly what we mean by tactical asset allocation. And it's mathematical driven. That's what I like mm -hmm. about it. It's not, you know, what does Matt feel like it's going to happen tomorrow, not what Pete or Ryan or anybody else in the office. It's all mathematical driven because we know one plus one is always going to be two, two plus two is going to be four and so forth. So when you can put that type of mechanisms in place to where your portfolios is math driven, it's so much easier to get the outcome that you want to, that you want to have. The one thing I might say about the downturns in the market, especially with somebody who is tactically watching what's on, is this also an opportunity to take a look at rebalancing? It is, Spike. And again, there's no better time to really get more insight into how you're positioned than right now. You know, we have the highest levels of inflation we've seen in 40 plus years. We have interest rates on the rise for the first time in 40 years as well. We have more uncertainty in the market over the last 20 plus years than we've perhaps ever seen in our nation's history. 
all these variables that really go against what we're always taught, which is that buy and hold mm -hmm. approach. If you set it and forget it, if you put those dollars away at the end of the day, you'll be just fine. It may not work that easily moving forward. And so having a plan that can adapt to those different market environments is extremely important and essential to make sure that those dollars last the next 20 to 30 years. Matt, so you've got people right now that are passively managing their accounts and they're obviously down. How do they transition to tactical? I mean, is, is it, do you need to wait right. for the market to come right. back up? Or do you, what's the psychology yeah, you've behind You've already taken the 10% haircut on your portfolio. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, and unfortunately, we all ordered that crystal ball off of Amazon yeah. years <laughs> ago, but yep. it came cracked, and so <laughs> it's not really telling us much. Game cloudy. <laughs> the key point, though, is that it's impossible to time the market. We never Absolutely. know whether things are going to bounce back quickly or if there's more downside yet to come. There's always that uncertainty. But having a tactical approach and how we perhaps remove risk from the equation as much as possible is the key driver to that. Now is the best time to ensure that you have a plan that can do that. Right. Well, as the exec executive director of financial planners <laughs> at Allied Wealth, some takeaways maybe before you leave. I'll give you a moment as well. We talked about different advisors you can work with, different investment strategies. How is somebody out there supposed to know who to work with? You gotta call us, right? Call <laughs> us. We're gonna talk to you. We're gonna I mean, you're it out. set up for retirement planning, decumulation. You know, I'm set up for retirement planning, Spike. But if you've got an old 401k that that you don't work at the company any longer, yeah. you can move that out. A lot of people don't know that you can move these things out of your old company and have a better approach. So if you you know if you're a few years from retirement, maybe even 10 years from retirement, but you've got this old 401k that's been lingering out there at the old company and you, you don't really know much about mm -hmm. it. We can, we can analyze that and, and, and look at that and help you move that and get into in a position you, you would like. Thank yeah. you, Peter. Uh, so, uh, Blade Stevenson, if you don't mind, tell them about the financial flight plan as we go out here today. Yeah, and to Pete's point, Spike, we're educators first. And so if you want to figure out if there we're the right type of advisor for you, we're going to take you through that educational process. And it incorporates a lot of different things. Understanding your tolerance for taking risk versus your capacity or your ability to take it uh, through these market downturns, uh, developing an investment plan to make sure you're properly diversified, making sure you have a tax plan in place to keep as many dollars in your pocket and out of Uncle Sam's as possible, a uh, legacy and estate plan. That's all part of the financial flight plan. Simply call our number, it's 844-944-7555. Thank you so much for watching On The Money. Make sure you get your complimentary financial flight plan. Call us here, we'll be back again next week.